जय श्री माता जी अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन लेट अस ऑल कलेक्टिवली बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड गिव अवर सिल्स अ बंधन Now let us recite Shri Ganesh Mantra. let us slowly bring our attention in our sastra shri mata ji kindly bless us with complete silence shri mata ji kindly make us completely thoughtless in this state let us now listen to shimata ji's speech tonight we have gathered here to do shri shiv puja
those people who have a clean heart can only do Shiva Puja. Those whose heart is not clean cannot do Shiva Puja. It's a simple principle of Sri Shivratri. As you had seen yesterday, we have snakes or these are horrible snakes. guiding behind the Shivalinga. The signi significance is this. See, those who are clean in heart, who are full of love for others, are always guarded by the power of Shiva, which are the snakes. It's a symbolic thing to say, very symbolic. But I must say that animals understand divine force much better than human beings, much better, because they have a clean heart. Whatever is their lifestyle built by nature, they carry on with it, but there's no malice, there's no jealousy, there's no all these mean things in their heart. They do it because it is supposed to be. But the quality of human beings, is only one, and that is how much they love and forgive. Loving capacity of human beings are such by which they conquer all their negative forces. They can easily see that it's not good to have all these qualities, or maybe that they understand it's not noble, noble to indulge into all these hum, inhuman behavior. They are not bound to indulge into all these things. Neither they are asked to be. But suddenly they get lured by such things which has got hatred, jealousy and greed. You see how Shiva lives. He lives in the Himalayas. See what clothes he wears what he eats. He has no demand for anything because he is complete, he is perfect. Such a personality is Shiva's. And if you are worshipping Him, you should find out within your heart what sort of feelings you have what sort of malice you nurture. These days in India, greed has become the main point. They are so mean and so low, which impossible to understand that they think money is everything which is not in the culture of Indians, no, no. 
in no way. But somehow they have picked it up in the foreign countries perhaps and it is spreading very much now that money is the most important. Think of Shiva. He never thought of money. He never wanted any money. He never wanted to show off himself. There's such a difference between Shiva and Shakti in their whole attitude because Shiva is absolutely a liberated personality. It is not bothering. If the people are indulging into wrong things, he'll destroy, finished. He doesn't want to cure, he doesn't want to improve, nothing of the kind. But for the Shakti it is important because this is her child, this universe is her child. All this is created by her. So naturally she is worried and she doesn't like people who try to take to mean things and nonsense. First of all, it was human beings started indulging in power. They moved from countries to country to empower themselves. Where is that power gone? Finished. Then after that, what happened with them is that they left their style with others. And now it seems that's very common to see people shamelessly being greedy. For them is the solution is Shiva. All such people will be destroyed. First of all, they will be exposed and then they will be destroyed to the last bit of it. Another thing <coughs> is that Shiva respects a person who has a good character. Person with a good character. And if anyone is bad character or indulges into bad things, Shiva won't spare them. So the Shakti creates, protects, looks after them, brings them up. But Shiva is sitting there just to destroy. Very important. This destruction is very important. This Shakti doesn't show those qualities. She may destroy some Rakshasas, but he can destroy nations after nations. First of all, the ego you have, who will destroy that? That too, Shiva. Shiva is in your Sastrara. He's sitting in the Sastrara. Now remember, on top of everything, the other day I saw one gentleman from the broadcasting newsman, he was very, very stupid and was talking very harsh to you. And I saw his Ekadash coming up. My God, I said, this one is now going to be in trouble. What is Ekadasha is nothing but the eleven powers of Shiva. They build up here and give you all kinds of diseases. The worst of all is cancer. And I knew that this fellow is going to have a very bad time. If he's not a surgery, how am I to tell him? How anybody has to tell him? But it comes from this Ekadasha Sutra. Now these are eleven powers of Shiva, very well described. 
Now these powers start working on people, even on such yogis, if they do not follow the principle of Sahaja. He is, I should say, watching you. Every part of your life he watches. How you behave, what you do, what is your dharma, he watches all that. And so many saints have warned you, so many incarnations have warned you. But I tell you, if you don't listen to them, then Shiva is not going to listen. He doesn't listen to it. If he is angry, he is angry. Whatever it is, very difficult to convince him that please spare this person, it's all right, forgive. But his basic quality is forgiveness. Can you imagine? His basic quality is forgiveness, but if it doesn't forgive, then you are finished. Up to a point maybe he might forgive, but after that, it's a very, very difficult situation. And I find that people don't realize what Shiva is. In the South we have two types of people, worshippers, one are Shaivites, another Vaishnavites. They are having a big fight with each other. Now it is less, much less. What is the work of Vishnu is to give you Realization, emancipation of human being, evolution of human being. But if you fail in your goodness, in your dharma, then Shiva comes in your life. We have to understand, we are all surrounded by their powers. We are all made by their powers. It's the Shakti who is protecting you. But to an extent, she cannot go above Shiva. She cannot cross. These days you find so many people indulging into politics. It's all money-making propositions. They all try to make money, it's no politics. They don't do any good to the whole communities, nowhere, either under fear or under abandonment. They behave in such a manner that they are not afraid of God, they are not afraid of His own attention on you. Perhaps they don't know that they are under the attention of Shiva. He is watching each and every person, whether you are Australian, English or Indian. Whatever religion you may follow, He is watching them. This is a thing one has to understand. And once you understand this, you will accept that you have to be good and dharmic people. You have to be good character people. Why people talk of good character? You try to understand the stupidity these days when people don't believe in it. People are doing all kinds of things, they are drinking, they are playing, yes. money, business, all kinds of things they are doing, without having any fear of the wrath of God. And that wrath comes from Shiva. I would like to warn you all, though you are all My children, be careful. Try to weigh every step that you take. 
Of course, I am there to support you, to help you, to protect you, but not beyond Shiva. I can't go beyond Him. Uh, it's such a power of Shiva, it's such a authority of Shiva. And to worship Him means to worship goodness in Him. The goodness could be compassion, could be love, could be forgiveness, anything. He likes only good people and He protect only good people. For example, some people are very power-oriented. Some are money-oriented and some are power-oriented. And the power-oriented also do it for money sometimes. That's the aim. They'll not stay in search. They'll be displaced. They do it, then come and ask for forgiveness, so much of forgiveness. We have done it. But try not to do anything of that kind. I, of course, forgive him, but this Shiva, he won't. He won't. He'll take you to task. And then you'll come to me, Mother, you must save us in a certificate. From his clutches is very difficult. Also, he is a very forgiving person. He forgives you many things. Because of me also he forgives. But after some time he when he takes over, there's no appeal, there's no saving. I do not want to frighten you, but I want to tell you the truth, it is the truth. You have to try to be good people. You have to try to be really good character people. I am told some people who are in Sahaja Yogas indulge in money laundering and all that. Also some of them have very bad characters. They run after girls and they try to look at the girls and all sorts of things. Now this has ruined the West specially. Also our Indians are learning from them. As it is, we have to respect ourselves. If we don't respect ourselves and we try to misbehave, I can only help you with your Kundalini. But if you go too much beyond it, Ekadasha Rudra will catch you, no doubt. It's a very big barrier on your forehead. Ekadasha Rudra. And it is so effective nowadays, so much active, all kinds of diseases which are coming now, it is all incurable, are because of Ekadasha. And also those who are suffering from possessions. The other day I met somebody who was very much caught up. And the Ekadasha was working. I found out he is a very fanatically influenced by something. I don't want to name it. But these we have found out are not correct things. In every religion we have people who are spreading nonsensical ideas. Now, if you don't have discretion about it, Nobody can help you. You should have a full discretion as to what is right and what is wrong. Then Shiva is with you. But if you indulge into all such nonsensical things, it is self-destructive, I must say, but to the Self which is destructive is the power of Shiva. 
what we call the self here is the power of Shiva. He destroys by many things, by many things. You can lose your reputation, you can lose your health, you can lose your wealth. Everything can happen to you till you are completely finished and fat. I've known people on the deathbed also, they're talking about money, what should she get money, how will he get money and this and that. Instead of talking about God or Self-realization they're talking about, it's such a normal thing. But if you see Shiva, He doesn't possess anything, He doesn't want anything. Whatever you give it to Him as a samarpan or anything, that He doesn't accept and He passes on to the Shakti, you do what you want to do. She is the one who is working out everything to benefit you, to make you happy. He is not bothered. In this case, you have to please Shiva. He will not try to please you. You have to go all the way to please Him. The very difficult personality of Shiva. In the Qur'an it's not written separately for Allah or for Shiva, or it's not differentiated because the people with whom he had to deal were all uneducated, stupid people. So he didn't give all the details that God is in different forms. So there's only one Allah they know, but they don't know anything that shows the differentiations of their jobs and work. It is the Shakti who loves, I agree, but she too can get angry very much. And once she gets angry, there's no end to it. Now, I have to tell you as Sahaja Yogis that you developed your qualities to please the Shiva. It's too much of anchoring, too much of uh, wants. All this is not necessary. Of course, I want you to live well and beautifully, not stupidly to go into jungles, or behave like hippies, that's not the point. The point is, from your heart, the attachment to things must go away. A person who is a Shiv Bhakta, he doesn't care for money, he doesn't know about money. He's a very generous person, extremely He's just generous. People may say, stupid, the way he goes on, the way he works it. But I don't think so. That's not at all the description.
let us recite the mahamantras Thank you, Shamata Ji, for blessing us with this beautiful meditation. Let us all bow down to Shamata Ji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and give ourselves a bandhan.
let us all gather to borrow morning same time jai shri mataji